Welcome to the Lely 360 degree virtual tour here at Bulls Green Farm in Cheshire. We're here to see the Lely Vector system in action, talk to Andrew Griffiths, the farmer, and also to hear Martin Kavanagh's take on this farm's animals and operation. Move your phone or use your mouse to look around each scene. Your tour begins in five, four, three, two, one. Hi, my name's Peter Hyde and I'm the commercial product specialist for Lely and my portfolio is the barn and feed portfolio. We're here today on Bulls Green Farm to talk to Andrew Griffiths. Andrew Griffiths has been milking robotically for about seven years, but more importantly for us today, he's been feeding using our Lely Vector system for about five years. So we're keen to see how he's been getting on with the system. So before we get on to talk to Griff about how he's been getting on with the Vector system, I just wanted to take a little bit of time now just to talk you through uh, the system, just a little bit of detail. So we're here at the heart of the Lely Vector, which is the kitchen. Now, normally these doors would be closed on the front of the kitchen here, and there are safety switches as well. So when the doors are open, the kitchen stops completely. But obviously today we wanted to show you what's going on. So we've installed these fences and a little bit of bypass on the magnetic switches so you can see what's happening. On my right, really the key to the Lely Vector system inside the kitchen is the feed grabber. That's what unlocks the flexibility of this system. On my left over here, we've got the MFRs. The MFRs are our mixing and feeding robot. So the grabber is going to take your selected feed types, drop it into the MFR. The MFR is going to mix it and chop it as well if you need and take it off to the cows where they need to be fed. So when the MFR gets to a feed fence that it needs to feed the cows, it lines itself up by reversing into position and angling itself to the correct orientation so the ultrasounds on the side of the machine can register the top rail of that feed fence. When it gets to where it needs to be, it's going to open up the feed door and begin to feed the cows. So when the MFR gets to a feed fence, it drops its skirt so it can always push up the feed. In this example here, where we are now, it's going to feed the cows so you can see the feed door opening the auger inside is going to begin to rotate, as is the dosing roll on the outside, and it's going to feed the cows. The MFR controls an even distribution through the speed at which it's feeding. So as the feed falls out, if it's falling out too slowly, the MFR will slow right down to a crawl. But if it's coming out too quickly, it'll speed up. What that means is that you're going to get an even distribution of feed along your feed fence to the cows. As it's driving down this particular feed passage, it's measuring what's going on in front of the cows. It's measuring how much feed is left. There's a laser just at the side of the machine, and it's using that laser to assess how much feed is left of the feed fence. And if the average height of feed across the feed fence is below the threshold, then it's going to call the kitchen and sell the kitchen, right? This group, group number four, which needs ration number three, is, needs to be fed next. Hi, everybody. Martin Kavanagh, the vet here. Uh, Peter has, has said about measuring the amount of feed. It's interesting because when we look at conventional systems, we're really looking to feed uh, to, to a feed refusal uh, so that we're feeding enough, but we're not. Uh, we have an adequate amount of feed the whole time. We're not wasting feed as such in the system. Uh, we have a tendency not to waste feed and when we make the cows do the work cleaning down to the concrete but we do need a refusal up to maybe three to three to five percent so if we have an automatic system and we feed enough all the time we can manage this we're putting out a small amount continuously we maintain an adequate amount all the time without having to feed a bulk or allowing that feed to get excessively sorted back to peter and griff The feed grabber uses a grid system to select the right feed type from the right block set up by the farmer. You can see here the feed grabber has selected the next feed type to be loaded into the MFR to make the ration. The auger rotates efficiently combining these various feed types and whilst it's mixing it's also being charged as it's parked in its docking station. So as it's being loaded and as it's mixing the feed it's also making sure that it's got a full battery ready to go out and feed the cows. So hi Griff, thanks for letting us be on your farm today. Really appreciate your time. Um, just whilst we're here and before we get stuck into the vector system, can you just tell me a little bit about yourself and about the farm that we've got here as well? Hi everyone. Um, it's third generation farm here now. I've been farming it for 30 years. 
We're farming about 500 acres, um, to just under 200 acres of maize in that, the rest grassland. Um, we've got 400 cows in herd, milking about 320 at the moment. And then there's 300 followers behind that as well. Crikey, so you're busy? Just slightly. <laughs> and um, on this farm, you were telling me before, so you've been operating the milking robots for about seven years, the Vector for about five years. How have you sort of fared over the past five years? What's your experience has been? Have you learned any tips and tricks really with dealing with automated feeding? Uh, early on, we had a lot of problems with it, but things have improved a lot. Um, you learn as you go along, really. Um, you just got to keep on top of your kitchen, keep it tidy. Um, you can have qu quite a lot of different feed types in here. So how many rations have you got on farm now? Then? At the moment, we run eight rations at the moment. Eight rations? And what were you before you had automated feeding? Five before. So would you say that something like this has just unlocked that opportunity to feed? I mean, yeah. what was stopping you before, Andy? It's probably a better question. It was making a lot smaller mix. Because if you've got a big feed wagon and only put a little bit in it, it doesn't mix it as well. But with the tub mixers, you can put little, with a bit of a lot smaller tub, you can put the smaller rations in. And you're finding it, in terms of operating the system and inputting those rations, how hard is that for you? It's very simple to input the rations. We, we just do it on the computer in the office. Well, wow, superb. How long um, does it take you to fill the kitchen? On a Friday afternoon, it'll take me two hours to fill it. And then you're, you're done till Monday, are you? Done then. In the winter, I might have to put a little bit in on a Sunday, but in the summer, it lasts till Monday. So how much are the tubs feeding out? Kilogram wise. Per day, yeah. In the winter, I know we max out 32 load, but then at the moment, we're feeding about 17 ton a day. 17 tons a day. The forage and straight, and in the winter about 22 ton a day. Crikey, and it's managing to keep up with your farm, no problem here. Superb. Well, I think that's a good segue. Why don't we head on down to the feed fence and you can talk to me a little bit more about the cows. Right now there is a, a low amount of feed present, but the feed is still well distributed. It's eaten evenly, and the cows are well spread over the barrier. The goal is to reduce the competition for low ranking cows enough feed and enough feed space. Remember, even if you have a lot of feed present, you need feed space to spread the cows. Lower ranking cows don't want to eat beside a high ranking cow. Uh, they will, and they will eat lower quality feed in preference. So feed space, uh, feed distribution. Okay, Peter. So we're down at the feed fence now then, Griff, and we were just talking about accuracy up at the feed kitchen and accuracy of the mix. How do you fare? What does it look like to you at the feed fence? Are you happy with it? Yeah, the the total mixed diet, it mixes very well indeed. Um, we're very pleased with the way it feeds evenly all the way down the barrier. Because if you were doing it with a tractor and feeder, you'd have quite a bit in one place and then a little bit. But with a vector, it feeds it evenly all the way along. That's the advantage with the laser on the, on the tub. Because as it's going along, it measures what's left at each barrier. And then when it's feeding it out as well, if, if it's a certain height above what it says, it moves a bit quicker. So as it pushes along and leaves it even all the way down the barrier. Perfect. And in terms of the quality of the mix here at the feed fence, it's all looking pretty even. And all the right stuff in it as well. Yeah, no, it's, the mix is very good. Okay, just pausing here for a bit, we want to reflect just a little on subclinical acidosis or SARA. Uh, our high yield and dairy cows are, are, are high risk for this. They're on high energy diets our dry matter intakes are quite high. We've got to think about slug feeding, so the impact of large meals being eaten, eaten on an irregular basis, generally due to erratic feed management. So the more fresh feed events we can create, the better. These are, cows can eat more meals that are, that are smaller, of better quality, and we allow the rumen pH to adjust. Also, each time we push up or we create a feed action, it allows cows to feed when they want, so they're eating unsorted feed. Uh, the more push-ups we get, and funnily enough, it creates more lying time for us and we get more milk out of that. So the goal again is let's take the stress out of the system and, and allow things to be a little bit more balanced. How are the cows getting on? They're looking in good shape. Yeah, the cows are doing very well at the moment. Fertility's good, the milking 
extremely well. The milkers are on 46 at the moment. Wow, they're flying. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah, very happy at the moment with them. One thing that we think has improved a lot is the fertility. Yeah, as we were over 400 days before, um, now we're about 385. So yeah, carbon index. Casting your mind back five years ago, if you can, what's been the biggest change for you as a farmer on your sort of daily life and your daily routine on the farm to switching to this level of automation? It means you can do it more whenever you want. You're not tied. As before, when we were feeding with a tractor and feeder, we used to feed twice a day anyway. Uh, because if, we end, if I got something on at a weekend and I fed once a day, you could guarantee your milk would be down a litre of cow on a Tuesday, guaranteed. We're going from twice a day to once. Um, so this has made a massive difference because you're getting a really good mix and I just do it on a Friday, fill it up and it lasts nearly all weekend. In the summer, if I've got something on, I'll put more in, but with the hot weather, I try and just put enough in to last 24 hours so it doesn't heat up too much. Griff mentioned when he went from two times a day feeding to one time at uh, one time a day, he lost some milk, he lost a litre along the way. And that can be accounted for reduced intake in some cows. So even though the average dry matter intake could have been the same, uh, more cows are under pressure to, to eat better quality feed. There's a much higher risk of sorting. Um, again, in conventional systems, we often look to get out more feed after the morning milking and the timing is not always possible to do that, uh, to get out that bulk of feed. So more, more feed outs or more fresh feed outs, it reinforces the point all the time. We're giving the cows much more opportunity. The smaller feed outs can have other value as well. Uh, we can avoid that feed heating up in the summertime and we get better feed quality. So Griff, thanks again for today. We've done a full lap of the farm now and it's great to see obviously the vector working flat out with you and working I guess in absolute harmony with you and the guys on the farm as well I guess I want to leave it on a question just about lifestyle really and ask you what was life before like before vector and automation and to how it is now really uh, before automation it was feeding the cows twice a day working nearly every other weekend so we didn't trust some of the staff on the machinery feeding. I wasn't perfect, but that's besides the point. Um, and nowadays, I take the calls on the robots at night, but I don't work weekends. I don't get up in the morning, I don't do my afternoon jobs, but I still work in the middle of the day. Um, and then lifestyle, you start when you want, pretty much. It just, you, your lifestyle's a lot more flexible than what it was before, when you were feeding, it was pretty rigid, you had to feed first thing in the morning or in an afternoon, but we fed twice, so it was both. Yeah. So you couldn't go out for the day and just leave everything to it. I had to come back or get someone else to feed on the afternoon. Um, but no, it's made a massive difference. A lot more relaxed, less stressful. Is it? <laughs> most of the time when the feeders are going very well, <laughs> which is most of the time. So I think with the change in lifestyle as well, obviously, you're working it so hard, things have got to pay back. I mean with regards to sort of labour and diesel spend, how did that change sort of before and after and how are you getting on with it now? The way we looked at it was putting a whole system is we looked at the new tractor, £100,000. The feed is nearly £50,000 for a top spec one. Um, then you've got to put a man on it and it was taking us three hours in the summer to feed and five hours in the winter. Um, and by the time you put your fuel in the tractor and paid a man to sit on that. And now it takes me probably eight hours a week maximum to feed the cows. Compared to five hours a day in the winter? Compared to five hours a day in the winter before, which is a massive, massive saving. So by the time you put your vet, this, the feeding system against your tractor and your feeder pretty much, and then your electricity usage you put against, which is probably less actually than your man and your diesel together. Do you think sort of five years on now and with the changes you've seen to the animals, do you reckon you've paid it off? I would say so, yes. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks again. Really appreciate your time, Griff. And uh, I'll be back soon, hopefully. Yeah, no doubt you will. <laughs> so summing up my part, um, the questions are, I really want to answer. Can we reduce that stress at the feed fence? 
Uh, performance is the absence of stress. It's easy to say, but it's hard to achieve. So can we get even distribution of cows and feed? Can we reduce competition? Can we, can we reduce sorting? Can we avoid erratic eating patterns and therefore avoid the risk of SARA and we get better health in these cows? Can we get more line time with better feed management? I think it's possible. I enjoyed seeing your farm grip from the comfort of my own armchair. Uh, thank you and continued success to you in the future. So we spent some time here today at Bulls Green Farm. We started with a brief introduction to the Lely Vector system, followed by a discussion with Griff about how he's been getting on with automated feeding. I'd just like to close now and just say thanks so much for joining me.